Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm gonna be in that winner's circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of What a Horse. And our buddy, Tommy, is sick. And I feel sorry for him. He's got to be operated on. But I got Mark to come over and take his place. I thought you. I thought you were getting ready to introduce me as Tommy and just hope nobody noticed. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't going to do that. I, I wouldn't do that to you. T Tommy's too much of a card. You, you don't. You, you don't cut up as much as Tommy does. I know. But, but he is in. He is in pretty rough shape. Plus, he's got to uh, have some oral surgery done Friday, and he's not looking. He said, "Jerry, I got to be there at nine o'clock." Said, "I ain't looking forward to it." I told him, I said, I had that done, and I wouldn't be looking forward to it either. If somebody talks as much as Tommy and myself, it's, oral surgery will be a rough recovery. <laughs> it, it will be. It re really, really will. Well, I tell you, Mark, we're going to be going over a lot of things today, especially the paturity, the changes in it. We're going to be talking a little bit about the academy and other things, plus the fundraiser we had. So. Before we do that, we're going to take a short pause for our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. Sounds good. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And J.D. Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book, too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6783 for breeding information. Come one, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or by the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee you will be satisfied as well watch your horses come running when you break out the feed for all horse feed give feed for all a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 highway 64 east in shelbyville tennessee and pick up a load of feed today joe is ready to load it for you uh, feed for all so good more of What a Horse coming up. For those of you who do not know Mark, this is Mark Farah. He's the executive director of the Breeders Association. And uh, you just took that position over here recently. Just a little over two months in. So not, not quite yet, even 90 days. If, have you got it up to here yet? <laughs> I, I told somebody it's like um, 
It's like a dog chasing a car. You know, you finally catch it, and then you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> That's it. it. <laughs> and if they used to, people would put something in their hubcap. We don't have a hubcap. With the dog grab it, it's smack him down. They're trying to break him. That, that doesn't work anymore. I do have a couple of announcements to make, and these, these are very important announcements. Walking in the Smokies will be the 31st through April the 2nd in Sevierville, Tennessee. On the screen are the numbers to call Tammy Triplett, 423-612-0345, and Lexi Stinnett, 828-550-8520. Start time is 545. That's Eastern time now. And judges Nathan Clark, Steve Gladwell, and Jason Hughes will mark the cards. Put that down, and if you need anything, call one of them pretty ladies. They will take care of you. Then we've got the Southern Charity Championship. We're going to be down there. If we can get out of the building, we're going to be streaming. It's the 8th and the 9th in Decatur. Morgan County Arena, call Bud Fox, 770-356-5924. Start time is 6 p.m. Central Time, and Judge Mike Sims. I'm looking forward to that. I've never seen Mike Judge. I have. So, I've seen him judge. He's a good judge. Well, I, I've heard a lot about him, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going down there. They, I, I like the Decatur show. Yeah. I like the arena. I like the people down there. It's always a lot of fun. I like the fried fish. In the well, yeah, they got good fried fish there. I'm, I wasn't going to bring up food. Jimmy's all the time accusing me. I just go places where they serve good food, yeah. which which that's true. I do, but I go other places too. Yeah. I, I look for a reason to go to anything in Chrysler to cater to Sweet Bob, Big Bob Gibson's on the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to do it all. Well, you know, Mark, the uh, you just took over, and I know there's a lot of hurdles that everybody has to go through and i know woe is fixing to take a leap because tommy hall he's resigning yep. and uh, i was kind of think you got any idea who they may get to take his place those are some shoes to fill that's i mean i guarantee you whoever it is um they can't find somebody as, as dedicated to the industry and really to the cause of woe as tommy hall has been in 44 years i mean that's un unheard of and um, you know, every, everybody's friends with him. He's he's helped Woe when, when they've been in the bind. He's helped a lot of folks, a lot of people in the industry when they needed him. And um, that, I, I just I, I can't imagine. I, I think they're going to need like two or three people to to, to do what he's doing. Well, I'm going to tell you. Sometimes it's just uh, you, you don't know what you have until you don't have them anymore. Yeah. And and I think Tommy Hall is going to be one of those people that you really, you know, you say, well, we can find someone to fill that position. And then you find out that that's some kind of position. You well, know, I mean, the, the job description for what he does would fill a three-ring binder. I don't know. You know, he, he does it all. And he, he, But I will tell you, he, he's having a little bit of a, um, a Tom Brady moment right now because he, uh, he's already kind of walking back on it and said you know, he's going to be there for the new person. And he, wants, he enjoys the horse shows, and they do a lot of horse shows, so I think he's going to. He, he's not going to leave somebody high and dry. He's going to he's going to be there and, and make sure it's a good transition. Well, I guess he, he must have heard that George Jones song. Who's going to fill their <laughs> shoes? Because I talked to him the other night and I said shoes going to be hard fill, big boy, and and they will be because it. And uh, I can under I, Mark. I retired three times, <laughs> so I mean it, it, some some things you just don't like. So so I went right back to doing phone systems again. But anyway, the. A lot of people, I've, I've got phone calls about the the uh, academy class. I talked to Chris the other night. I believe he said something new about it. And we've talked about the uh, equine education and, and the future of what we're going to do there. But right now, y'all were looking at doing the uh, the making changes for the fraternity, which uh, I know there are people got a lot of questions about them. Uh, but before before we start, let, let's talk about the academy classes. Okay. Because um, that, that that was always a big thing. Joni Janae did that for years and years, and, and she did a fantastic job. But we have talked. Several of us have talked about getting that back started. And I know the number one issue sponsors. That's always the big issue. So well, I'll tell you. Um, Sponsors is, is, of course, you know, what what makes the wheels turn. 
The other thing is, you know, we don't have a lot of people who are just purely doing riding instruction right now. Right. And, you know, most of the people we have, you know, they kind of do it on the side and they're, they're not willing to take away a lot of their training time for instruction time because training probably pays better. Um, I mean, I, I feel like we need some more instructors too that, that that's what they do. Um, I, let me tell you, in Saddlebridge, you know, their academy program is huge. And last year during, or last two years during COVID, I mean, they took off. I mean, it was already big, but when there was no soccer going on and no team sports going on and you could do individual, you know, right. instruction, I mean, they could not fill their books fast enough with, with riders. Well, you know, and, and I'm a firm believer in this. Some of our best instructors are trainers. Oh, if, if, and, and to me, if we, if we come up with some program some way that would benefit the trainers to take maybe one or two students and a lot of them when they go get a horse they go to a barn and the riders jerry williams jerry williams works with a lot of them and some of them are just kids that come out there and want to ride and he, he will set them up and let them ride but there's got to be other people that would jill derrickson she's a fantastic equine person and uh, just different ones, her daughters. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm trying to climb a mountain, and, uh, and, and you can't ever tell because you don't know. You just don't know what's on everybody's plate. Right, and I, I think a lot of people are intimidated because they they think you know riding instruction is typically been equitation. Right. Well, you know, academy's not equitation. You're not necessarily you know, training these, these kids and these beginners to be equitation riders, you're just teaching them to ride, plain and, plain and simple. And the, the good thing about us is we've got such a, a, a horse that's easy to ride that it. The, the more people we can get on that horse, I think the, the, the better it's going to be for, for all of us. And, um, I mean, we've got, we've got such a good product. We just got to get them through the door and get them on a horse. Well, that's what I'm thinking is trail riding makes no difference. We just showed some video of the water glass class. Yeah. And uh, we've gone out to horse play and, and watched them go through the obstacle course. So anything that would teach a, a child to, to ride is, is, to me, you know, it's just something that you do. And, and a lot of these trainers, when they sell a horse, they end up coaching the rider, whether it be a, a youngster or it be an a adult, I mean, they, they need instructions on how to ride. So I wish there was some way, and, and people listening out there, somebody will call me with an idea. Well, good. I can tell you I that. You'll share it. And I, I will. I'm going to tell them to call you. Good. I'm going to say, you got an idea? Here's Mark's number. Well, call I mean, it. I wish Tommy was here because, you know, um, Tommy and I were were a part of maybe the, the first academy classes or first mm -hmm. academy show we had mm -hmm. for walking horses years ago. Um, we did a, a show called the World Cup Spring Premier in Calisonic Arena, and, but Tommy was announcing the, the morning classes and we had academy classes. Yeah. It, it was the first time we had them for walking horses and, and we sat there and talked about it that day, like, man, we need, we need this. I have seen, uh, I've seen academy classes being held in the Calisonic over at Cedar Ridge and that's not a great big arena in there, but we, we had academy classes in there. And then, of course, out at Mount uh, Pleasant Valley, they'll cut that place in half and, and have horses warming up on one end, the academy on the next. So there, there's plenty of places. And, of course, in the summertime, as you saw a few months ago, they, we can not have them outside because these uh, country boy shows are outside. But it just getting a, getting a child on a horse and letting them ride. Yeah. And not, not just children. I mean, you know, academy can be for, for any age. Oh, yeah. And that, that's, you know, that's a great thing. You know, people that, that you know, well past their teen years that's can right. decide they want to take up riding. Well, I mean, I, if, if you're, you know, getting older, I mean, I can't think of a better horse to, to decide to ride on than a walking horse. So we actually got Jimmy Fuller on a horse, but they then had to lead him around. Yeah. But anyway, he, he adjusted his sunglasses and everything, got everything just right, and then he wrote. So I understand what you're saying about the uh, no matter how old you are, because yep. <laughs> he's, old, he's older. Than, I'm, I'm just throwing a gig at him right now. <laughs> got to do something. But let's talk about the uh, futurity. And 
I know y'all are making changes. If you would explain to the people the changes that will be made. Okay. So the the futurity over the last few years has um, gone to pretty much four futurity classes, and then everything else was a jackpot. Right. And the only four futurity classes we had, we had weanling cults and fillies and yearling cults and fillies. Those, you know, we split those over the four classes. Everything else was jackpot. And we kind of, even it was a successful show. Um, it, it, financially, it was successful for Tweeba. And the problem is we weren't really having a futurity. We basically were having a one-night horse show right. on the first night of the celebration. That's it. And, you know, we, we started getting a little pushback about that, you know, being qualifying classes and the celebration judges judging it. And, you know, we were just having, you know, all kinds of classes. So we committed to, you know, going back to a futurity. And, you know, the goals were to, to bring two- and three-year-olds back into it. And, and then also one of our big goals was to make sure that no matter – where those horses go when they go under saddle, there's a division for them to still compete for futurity prize money. Right. Um, and as you know, I mean, there's a ton of divisions now. Yes. I mean, it's, it used to be you just had to decide where you're going to be performance or flat shot. Well, now are you going to be, you know, performance? Or are you going to be show pleasure? Are you going to be park performance? Flat shot? Are you going to be trail pleasure, country pleasure, all day pleasure, light shot? Um, so. We've worked out a, a deal, you know, through several meetings with the celebration where the two and three year old classes will actually be integrated with celebration classes. So for instance, if you have a two year old trail pleasure horse, you will nominate it with Tweeba for the futurity, then you will enter it in the celebration's two year old trail pleasure class. Right. And the highest placing futurity nominated horse in that class will get first place prize money. Now it may be second or third in the celebration final ties, but if it's the highest placing nominated horse we have, it'll be first place for the futurity. And so you would get second place prize money and a ribbon from the celebration and might get first place futurity prize money and get rider's cut points for both as well. Okay, well, here's a question. I asked you this right. the other day and you explained it, which, which I understood. What will happen if, say, there's 20 horses in a class, because you're talking about the two-year-old and the three-year-old, and in, 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 in that, are they going to be in the championship class or are they going to be in a qualifying class? Because you'll have section A, section B. Yeah. So are, is it one that's just in there? How's that going to work? So the, the, the classes are spelled out that, that are eligible for futurity money, and none of them are championship classes. They're, okay. all, they're all qualifying classes. And and if one if a class is split, then uh, the agreement is that all of the futurity nominated horses would go in the same split. Say, say, in, say in one split, they would just go in one, yeah. like the B or the A. Right. So now here's the next question. Let's just say there's 25 horses or 20 horses in the a, in the B, and this the qualifying. But none of the none of the and I like the way you explain this. None of the nominated horses get uh, tied. They don't. They're not one of the ten. How's that going to work? So, well, first of all, I mean, we I realize that you know, as we bring two and three year olds, you know, this is this is an experiment. Hopefully, a good experiment. Right. Um, you know, we're we're dealing with you know the last several years, you know, two percent or less of the new foals have have nominated for the futurity. Right. Um, the numbers have, haven't been great. And I would love to think that that big numbers and a lot of horses are something we have to deal with as we plan for 2023. Right. Um, you know, right now the thought is if they, you know, futurity nominated horses are in that class and, you know, they tie the class and present the 10 ribbons and, and we still have some futurity nominated horses that didn't get a ribbon. What we'll do is, you know, it, there's a good likelihood that those horses, even if they didn't get a ribbon, got a vote. That's it. And we'll look at, so we'll have to look at the judges' cards and see who ranks higher. And then, you know, when when you exhaust that method, then you just you'll just split the money between between the others. 
Well, that, that, that makes sense because and it happens a lot more yeah. than people think it does. Yeah, <laughs> and, that may, and that may not be the best thing going forward, and, and I would love to think that, that 20 entries in a, a class is, is something that we'll, we'll deal with, so. Oh yes, you want, you want a lot of them, but I, I've, I had a horse in a class that was 27 horses in there, and they was only given five ribbons. And th this was up at a show in Columbia. And my horse got one fifth place vote. <laughs> That's all he got. So I said, well, at least one of the judges saw it. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it does happen a lot. And a lot of people don't realize that. But when you look at the judges card, you'll see some good horses that may not even be on a, one judge's card and be on another judge's card and that sometimes because that horse did something that they saw the others didn't so it but if i'm not mistaken the futurity is, has been giving eight ribbons um in that i believe class. that's right and so you know it gives us a, a little flexibility there you know the yeah, you got two more time two more All right and so so hopefully that'll that'll help us find you know if we, if we have eight Futurity nominated horses in there, we'll be able to, to get them placed. Well, yeah, and, and I've seen it where you had an A, B, and C. Right. And right now, to be honest, Mark, we're we're getting we're getting a lot more horses from what I've been told are being bred and are being uh, registered, which that's up from the past. At one time, you know, we we people wasn't registering; they wanted to see what they was going to do. Right. and then they'd register them but more and more because now there's so many different avenues to sell our horse but the one thing that makes it more valuable is that registration because it's a uh, i don't know if you saw where the other day the trail horse sold for eighty thousand dollars through the auction did wow. you see that well it was there's a lady that's got a website that she will take video of your horse and put it out there and they'll auction it and uh, I called her and talked to her for a while. And she told me that there was in the United States and the people that contact her, there was uh, over 100,000 people looking for a Tennessee walking horse. I believe it. So I'll give you one of these, but we put together some, some stats that we've been giving out to legislators and people when, when I've met with them. And one of the things that struck me in this is um, individual stallions that were bred last year there were 650 i can believe that i would have never i would have never thought that but that i mean you know you know you think about about our breeding bars but that you know that's that's just a fraction of what total number of stallions are breeding out there and there's a lot of people that are that are breeding at home and breeding on their farm and breeding in places we've never heard of and and thankfully still see a value in registering those horses and and sending in their breeding reports and, and all that. Because, I mean, our, our numbers as a breed are strong. Um, not only strong for us, but strong compared to others. Well, it's just, it, there's so many different avenues. Right. And, and this is what, what I was looking at, because the other night at the auction, which we're going to talk about the auction later, but I do want to point this out. There was a spotted horse that a stud fee to that spotted horse sold during the auction. I got a text message the next morning or a message on Facebook won't know how much the stud fee brought. I had no idea because they was it's like the people would call and say, Jerry, we want to bid on items. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Woody Wood, there's a reason he had that gold microphone. He, I mean, he could. Hey, he they was popping. <laughs> His son did a good job too. Yeah. I mean, he, he was yeah. blowing that whistle. But the items were going so fast that, uh, and 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 it, it's just unbelievable. I told the lady, I said, I'm sorry, but I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I'm, I ain't gonna try to catch up with you. But th th this is one of the reasons that when this lady told me that everybody wants that smooth gated horse that they tired of this and all the different avenues that you've got out here for these horses shooting from uh, horseback they've even got archery from horseback <laughs> I'm, I'm serious and, and I, that I would love I really would. My son's an archery teacher, and he, he his kids have won national championship, state championship. Wow. And I said, boy, if I could get my granddaughter on a horse, <laughs> let her shoot. But they, they, of course, they shoot them, them compound bows. They don't shoot the long bows. But 
the, the shooting from horseback and then you got your obstacle courses and all this. I mean, that's, that's to me, is just fantastic. And that, that's really, you know, I have more people, you know, talk about how they got into horses and there, there is so many things you can do and it's really something that everybody in your family can do. Um, there, there's few activities that your whole family can participate in. And well, I mean, this is really, one of This them. is really one of them. And the, uh, I think that's, you know, something we need to talk about more and, and, and promote more. But Well, just look at this right here. I mean... The whole family go out and do that, right? And love doing it. And and there be, you look at the different families where the father, the son, the wife, the daughter-in-law, the grandson, <laughs> the granddaughter, all of them ride horses. And I mean it's it's a it's a way to do. But you get horses that do all of this, and then take them, and and. It's amazing the people that will say, hey, I'd love to have that. And I've had people tell me that, uh, well, why, why, would, why is that something? And I told them, I said, well, go out there and get on one that's not trained to do it. And then call me and tell me what you <laughs> think. Because you'll find out quick, like going across a blue cover, I mean, or going into water. Yeah. I mean, hey, that ain't something they're going to jump up and do. Oh, I mean, I, I mean I watch people um, and see pictures of people on, on these trail rides and on these big rocks and these cliffs, and I'm just no way. Well, uh, there's no way, but <laughs> but all of them, it's just like down at Bobby McNatt's. He he breeds Rocky Mountain horses, which they're part right. walking horse. Those people want that ride just what they're after. That's the only thing they're after. And to me, if we had instructors just teach trail rides, yeah. And we've got some farms that are ideal for that. Well, you know, Jess Felipeck and Kyle Elliott did a, a and, and Dickie Gardner, and I think Victoria too, they all did a, a seminar not long ago on, yeah. on trail riding and do our, on the trail obstacle course. Yeah. And I've, I've heard from several people who, who are going to kind of try it this year just because it may be something, yeah, to, fun to, something do. to do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a short pause for our sponsors because without them we wouldn't be here. But we'll be right back. A Gin to Win started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Gin would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaise Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the amateur four-year-old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both amateur and open show pleasure divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both open and amateur divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen to Win is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once. And deliver to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. The Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow.
I don't want anybody to forget the winter circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winter circle when you're getting your equine needs. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And just so you know, I'm here with the executive director from the Breeders Association, Mr. Mark Fair. And Mark, we're going to go and talk about equine education because we spoke about it a minute ago, but you, and you, you hit a good point because when we did the equine education, there was over 2,000 kids rode a horse. And uh, some of them had never been on a horse. Uh, and it was just unbelievable. They loved it. So that's one of the things that I'd like to see us do again. It's... Uh, and there, there's some funds for that, too, because uh, Walmart contributed funds to have one. The question is, where do we have it? Yeah. Uh, now, I talked to uh, Reimer, Dr. Reimer, about uh, USDA coming because they came down and they had games that the, the kids played. Plus, they had displays and they went through all the parts of a horse. And I mean, that was a hot spot. But did, did you get to make it to this? I didn't. I've seen the, I've seen the videos and the, the coverage of it. How many kids were there? Over 2,000. Uh, I was uh, one entire school call. They came. I got a call from the principal, and he said, Jerry said, all of them want to come. What do you think? I said, bring them. I mean, it was, it was great. Uh, but all of them got to ride a horse. Uh, and we had people jumping in and helping. There's Wayne Hart. He just jumps in, says, hey, I'll help y'all. What do you need done? So it was, it was really great. Everybody, I mean, just, I don't know. It's a very, very touching thing. But I, I will tell you one of the best parts of it. Herbert Derrickson was going <laughs> to sing the national anthem. Yeah, this is why, I mean, this went viral. This, I, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when his mic quit, the kids started singing. And I tell you what, you talk about making the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Yep. You sit there and listen to that and say, man, this is, this is fantastic. But uh, all them kids, I will say this, they stayed until the bitter end. That's the USDA booth there. I mean, and we're lucky that, to have somebody that, that took this up and, and did it. Because, you know, um, I met with the Farm Bureau a few weeks ago, and, and one of the things we talked about was their, you know, Ag in the Classroom initiative. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something Farm mm -hmm. Bureaus do nationwide is, you know, work with teachers and schools on, on the curriculum and Ag in the Classroom. And um, it, doesn't, it doesn't touch as many people as this, probably. This was, this was fantastic. Well, we did a little everything, and, and Kathy and I and Denise Rowland, we met with some a senator from Nashville with uh, an idea that, and I would love to see it happen, is if we could get competition, equine competition in schools, and it, it doesn't have to be, it could be trail riding, it could be any kind of competition, then, and get the state of Tennessee behind it, start off in middle Tennessee and let it expand out, it would increase the interest in horses because kids can get college educations, grants to go to school for equine. Right. So, I mean, it's not as though you're doing something for nothing, but they, they've got scholarships for everything now. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know my son does archery, like I said, and, and uh, oh, he, he does a fantastic job. Well, we're into the, these are the victory passes from the uh, trainer show, the reserves and the winners. This right here is Sky's masterpiece, Eddie Guthrie's horse. I thought that horse made a fantastic show. Two-year-old Marin Gilding class, and he was reserved. So you can imagine what the winner looked like. <laughs> I 
I mean, that's the two two year olds in, in March. You just you don't know what you're going to get, and I mean, they were really some impressive. Ones. What I was really tickled with the trainer show is every horse in there looked good. There was no uh, people all the time talking about the abuse and everything, but all these horses were free going. There's Brain Power and Jake Jacobs. Jake is is one of the special people. He loves to help children, and uh, he's got a farm over there. He's got every kind of animal on it. And Ali Joe wanted a giraffe, and. Uh, Jake told me, he said, now we ain't getting no draft. <laughs> he said, yeah. he talks big now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know whether he'll get a giraffe now. Them things get me. But I tell you what, brain power, he, he set the bar for the for the canter class, the amateur canter class. He, he did a great job. That horse got a beautiful canter. He looks really good. Oh, he does. Jake's a good rider. I like the way he sets up in that saddle. And here's my buddy Bob Adcock. Can't beat Bob with a stick. <laughs> he emailed me this morning. 50 and over winner. <laughs> you, you know that, that horse was, uh, they made a deal on that horse at one time. He's, he uh, sold for a load of shavings. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's fact. Well, so and you wouldn't get him for a boat full of shavings now. And we, we talk about the families in it. I mean, that's, you know, oh. his grandfather and father and him and his, his daughter. Brother, and I mean, it's just. Brother. And, I mean, yeah. Lord, all of them. Seems like they just keep going. But Bob, Bob's a good one. He supports the industry big time, works hard. Auctioneer. I believe uh, he's Tommy's idol. <laughs> <laughs> right here's I'm dancing for dollars and Jimmy McConnell for Kelsey Andrews, 15 to and under mares and gilding. That that right there is uh, to me. I love the way she's lit up. Yeah. Got a good walk. Jimmy had, Jimmy had a good trainer show. He did. He did. But I'm gonna tell you, you go to Jimmy McConnell's barn. We went out there the other day. And he finally stopped and said hi. Really? I mean, he, he when he's on that horse, he's on that horse. He he is training. And then after he finally got done, then he parked in. He come over, talked for a minute, went right back, and got on another. Because he he don't mess around. Jimmy works hard. In Molly, she's limitless. Tommy keeps thinking that she's gonna sign that mare over to him, but he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I wouldn't count on that. I'll tell you what, that's a nice mare, and it, it, that mare doesn't seem to make a mistake. It, all the times I've seen it, it comes in, and it's doing that right there, getting it done. Molly refers to her limitless and dollars as her ladies. Yes. Her girls, her girls. Yeah, she, you can, she enjoys that way too much. I don't think Tommy's gonna get a chance. I know. She loves her horses now. That's a fact. He's bounding down Derek Monahan for Shane Porterfield. Now Shane Porterfield's one that loves his horses too. I, I called him and asked him about doing a reserve on this one because I thought he looked so good. And uh, he jumped right up and he said, he. My four-year-old was in there with a bad cat, but I thought he looked good, too. <laughs> <laughs> These advertisements that we run, they, that's what enables us to make all the videos that we do and get out there, the promotional videos, and they're, to me, they're important. Here's Mr. True Blue. And Jake Jacobs, the 15 2 and under reserve winner. I thought he made a great show. I did too. I, I liked that horse last year too. Well, I'm going to tell you, these horses, a lot of them are going to just get better and better and better as time passes. And some of them, you just like we'll see in just a few minutes, there's a couple of them that are just Mr. Automatic. You yeah. get them out of the stall, and they're ready to go.
Right here is Ferrari 308 and Kenny Smith. He's an amateur trainer, do you believe it? <laughs> yeah, he, he's one of these like LaRue McWater. He's been around them horses so long, he'd be an amateur all right. The only reason he ain't got his trainer's license. <laughs> I mean, it always reminds me of the people talking about, you know, it was um, professionals that built the Titanic and amateurs that built the, the Ark and that yeah. man. He always makes me think of that of that saying. I mean, don't don't count him out because he's an amateur trainer. Uh, well, him and his daughter Mo. Right. Day is day is right in there with him. They do a great job. Kenny's good. I've watched him judge. He's good too. Right there's Manning. And Taylor Walters, reserved in the Wada Auxiliary, family members. I'm a Tennessee fan, so you know I'm. <laughs> I always like Manny. I thought, I thought maybe you were a Colts fan. <laughs> no, I, I, I like Colts too, but I'm a Tennessee fan now. Volunteers, love them. My wife says when it comes to horses, I'm just fickle. <laughs> I, I like them. I like so many of them. It's a good thing I'm not a millionaire. I'd, yeah. be, I'd be loaded down with them. The same here. Or, or or good thing I'm not a judge. I don't know if I'd ever be able to choose between some of them. Hey, so, some of them, I, I, I watch it. I think I know who won, but I come back here and look at video and say, no, I like that other well, that's the thing. I mean, I'm just, I'm sitting here watching this, and I mean, it, it looks totally different from the, you know, perspective you get in center ring. Allie Joe Jacobs now. This young lady right here, I'm telling you, Mark, she is going to be hard to beat because she works. Well, didn't, didn't she win last year at the celebration with like a broken yep. arm or something? Yes, sure did. But, I mean, she... She wants to ride every day, and she wants to practice. And I mean, she just, uh, and she, she learns good lessons. She, uh, one class she was winning, I thought, judge, and, uh, and Russ Thompson was judging, and her foot come out of the stirrup, and instead of pulling in, calling time out, she just stopped the horse, reached down, put her foot back in it. Russ was looking right at her, and he just shook his head and turned around. And then he tied her third out of three. And, uh, of course, Allie Joe didn't know why. She thought she'd make a good show. But, yeah. but Jake did. Jake knew what happened. Right here is Dark Rain and Edgar Abernathy. I tell you what, that horse, he gets to going. Yeah. And, and he, he, he gets her done. Got a quick step about him. And reaches. Look how far he's reaching. I mean, so this is this one I'm looking down reading, and I hate I missed it. I'm glad I'm watching it now. He's something else. He is something else. Well, I know you you announced the first two nights. I did the well. I did the yeah. I did Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. All right. Um, and my buddy. Um, Travis Olinger from Ottawa came in and did Friday. Well, I knew that all of a sudden it was different. I said, what happened? Right here is, I'm big enough. I'm going to say something about this. This young lady was the only one in the class. And her mother and I were talking. And I told her, I said, that right there is, to me, would be the hardest thing for a young person to do because she knows every eye in the building's on yep. her. Now, everybody's watching her. But now she did a super, super job, super job. And that's, I ain't so sure there'd been some in there that 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 horse been hard to beat. It's, it's been fun to watch those those girls grow up. Oh, it has. Beth done a great job with them. She certainly has. You know, there's some. There's some friends whose kids, you just, you know, you watch them and you just hope one day you don't have to go bail them out of jail. And then there's some like, like best kids, like, like BB and Maxine, and you just, you can't wait to see what they do. You know it's going to be just That's something it. phenomenal one day. 
tell you, we, we got a lot of good kids in the, in the youth division in the celebration. Right. I mean, it's a walking horse industry. They just, right there is Switchblade and Jimmy McConnell for LaRue McWater. That was one Shane said he was in there with a bad cat. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he was. Now, Jimmy had him cranking. He set the bar. I mean, he he made a powerful statement last year at the trainer show. He sure three did. Three year olds. And, and I'm going to tell you, he did not disappoint this year at no, all. No. He, um. This horse got some great owners, too. I'll tell you one other thing. Cole Chills, I seen one of his offsprings the other day and wait until he hits the ring. That's, um, Ann was in the, the office the other day, you know, registering some, and um, she's real excited about this oh, Cole yeah. Chills Colts. He's a good one. And this right here is a oh, bad man. Head. Right there is Honor's Image and Tanner Burks. He was reserved. But you see the two different ways of going on these horses. That's a nice horse right there. Real nice. That Shane Porterfield's a super good guy. He, he really supports this industry. Mr. Heisman, and this is one that I refer to as Mr. Automatic. How, how old is Mr. Heisman? I think Mr. Heisman's about 12, 14 right now, somewhere in there. No, no, I take that back. He's uh, he's over 15 because he, he showed in the... Uh, uh, oh, the classic horse book. He sure did. Did he? i tell you what, he's... But I've talked to some of his trainers and they say, you can get him out put a four on him and, and he will go out there and get it done. I like him because he looks like a chess set. The knight in yeah. the chess set. I said that the first time I saw him and I stick with him. Bruce does a fantastic job of showing him. I mean, that's been a really good fit. Oh, oh yeah. Well, Robin's a lot prettier than <laughs> Bruce, but, but Bruce will do. And right here, Georgia, Florida line. He made a great show. And that horse was in another division, and they stuck him in this one, and he's been like he's found a home. Right. He's got that deliberate walk about him. Yeah, he looks good. And right here he is. I just got a sneaky feeling that lady down there, her name, that she's going to end up on that horse for us years over here. Walking horse state class winner. But I mean, she, I don't know. She's, I know, she's but never had a state, I think she's having fun having a state horse well, now too. Well, she is, I grant you, but I just, I just feel her wanting to ride this horse. Oh, I'm sure she, <laughs> she oh, I'm to sure. show this horse. I'm sure. I know if I owned him, I'd want to show Oh, him. absolutely. Absolutely. Jimmy Mack. Maybe, maybe it's time for an amateur just to come back in the big state. Hey, that might be it. <laughs> you talk about shaking things up. That's shake them up. Shake them up big time. I like that horse now, I really do. All right, we're going to take a quick pause for our sponsors and be right back because we're going to go over the benefit. We'll be right back. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again. Just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. 
The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi-night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> Now, Mark, we're going to go to the benefit, and you got rooked into uh, or, hooked, or hooked into announce it and everything. Yeah. But in all honesty, it was great, wasn't it? <laughs> it? It was really good, and I mean, you know, Woody's my—he's my neighbor um, there in Flat Creek. So you know, we tr we try to stick together in Flat mm -hmm. Creek. And, um, I was I was glad to, to help out, but I was I was even happier to see all the people turn out for it. It was it was a fantastic night. Well, it's I'm gonna tell you they uh, they had items all over the place, but uh, there was one bidding war that went on that really <laughs> really shook everybody. But it was it was a good thing. But now you you've got nominations up for the fraternity right now, right? Right. If you go if you go to our website twhbea.com and go to programs and then fraternity, um, all the stuff you need to know is there. A list of the classes that you can show in. There's a a way to nominate your um, your horses online, or you can download the nomination form and mail it in with a check, or drop it by the office. You know, somebody come by the office and seeing all those people in there, I was surprised by how many people had never been to the Tweeba building and didn't know we had that auditorium there. I know. Um, I mean, I, 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 of course, you know, feel like, I, I want every look at all those people. I, I want everybody to feel like that's kind of their home if they're in the, the walking horse business. So I was, I was glad they were there. And um, Well, it was, now, now we're going to see the bid war. Watch this. Watch this. We got two ladies there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, I sat back there and I watched this, I told CJ, I said, CJ, we got to have some of this. Them ladies are going at it. And they just kept on, kept on, I believe it brought 5,300. Yeah, it was over 5,000. Yeah. $5,300. You know, there's not a time in my life that I hadn't known um, Susie Johnson. And um, when she makes her mind up, you just better get out of the way. She's going to go to it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I, I talk to her quite often. She, she's all right. She uh, loves them grand boys. Oh, yeah. Now, buddy. Hey. They were just going back and forth, back and forth. And I believe this was for a, a month's training. A month's training with um, with Deborah, uh, to David and Jessica Mast. And, uh, I, I told him after it, I mean, it brought over $5,000. I told David, I said, David, I think your customers just set your new monthly, your new monthly training fee. If, if that's true, everybody in that bar is going to be mad at them. <laughs> You'll be mad at Susie. <laughs> but Susie finally won it. But they, they did, they did that for charity and that was good. We showed a video of Missy a few, few minutes ago. She was up, she was up and around. There's Woody, Woody. His, his golden microphone. Yep. $65,000. I mean, we got we've got great horses, but they, but I think maybe the people are even greater that we that we deal with in this walking horse business. I tell you what was so great about this mark. Every different organization in the walking horse industry got together for one common reason. And spotted too, I mean. That, that, yeah, that's what I say, the yeah. spotted, whoa, all of them. I mean, they, they came together and, and did this 
and raised sixty five thousand dollars. I un- mean, it was unbelievable. Hey, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, Woody and his, you know, his auctioneering. You know, I, I don't know what they say between all the numbers, like. How many, how many, whatever he said. He doesn't either. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start doing that. When I don't know a horse's name when it comes out or a person's name, I'm going to just, I'm going to go to something like that. How many, how many? <laughs> just go, well, you know when, when a little baby's little, you go, blah, 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 blah. Well, well, that's it. That's what, he, that's what he does. He just rattling it off and go into it. But he gets it done. Get to, people get out there. And the only thing they're listening to is the price. Yeah. That, that's the only thing they understand. Everything else is to me is just mumbo jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're we're going to have the fraternity is going to be in with a celebration, and they're going to show together. But all the fraternity nominated horses will be in one section. If if the, they if the class is split, they'll be in the, in the same section. So I mean, I'm I'm hoping you know Monday night when it's two year old stud night, you know last year there were there were two splits. I, I hope there's enough. Futurity time nominated mm-hmm. horses that there's three splits now and one of those splits is futurity But you know if you're a, if you're a fan of you know the two-year-old stud night I mean it's gonna be even better this year. Oh Lord. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you there, there's one other thing now They pay the not nom- they nominate their horse, right. but then they they do have to pay the entry fee They have to enter for, the celebration for the well. celebration which that that's gonna help both but you get so. you get prize money from both and you get um, yeah. Riders Cup put right. prize for both too so it, it's it's good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a good idea. Uh, I'm like you. I I hope nobody regrets it later. I hope it works out fantastic. I'm, I, I hope it's huge. And you know that's we're dealing with those problems next year. Um, well, what what are you going to do on on the fraternity night? Are you going to still have a classes the four classes? So the the celebration. Um, it, it's their responsibility now to, to schedule all this. Okay. So when you when you go to our website and you you pull the fraternity classes, um, you see you see the the list of classes that the celebration has that you can earn fraternity money in. Okay. okay. But now they will have to schedule those on particular lines. We have asked you know that the and, and they've agreed that the halter classes will still be on that Wednesday night because that's okay. what they're used to. That'd be good because we'll still have the winglings, the and the yearlings. Yep. on Wednesday night, and then we can go from there. Past that, it's up to them. All right. Well, Mark, I, I do appreciate you coming over. And anybody got any questions for the breeders, feel free to call the breeders. Yes. Don't don't call me. I'm going to send you to Hill. Call anytime. <laughs> call anytime. I appreciate you having me. Well, I appreciate you coming over and looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to working back and forth with the breeders this year. If we can get some stuff going, I've done talk to Chris, and there was a lady that called me about, uh, academy classes and she talked to me about going to schools and all this which I love doing that I mean when, when you yep. go in and you talk to these kids in a classroom they will ask you questions about these horses and and it's good in, I mean it's good to to let them know what's available and that might be the starting point of getting an equine education in school yep I think it'd be great appreciate it Mark thank you so much uh-huh. see y'all next week Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.